Hi everyone. <laughs> it's all going on at the moment. I've got I've had a Zoom piano meeting already going on in the kitchen. We've now got our son who's only in school back at school for half a week only. These are the days he's not at school, so he's now got a music lesson on Zoom going on in the kitchen. So if you can hear anything in the background, that's what you can hear. Um, but you're not allowed to join in with the Zoom music lesson. You've got to you've got to listen to me waffling on unfortunately about theatre for a bit. So anyway, let's get back on track. So, last week, the government published its long-awaited five-point roadmap to reopening uh, performing arts venues all up and down the country. Hooray! Unfortunately, to say that the plan has uh, been met with disappointment, let's say, is something of what an understatement. The main point of criticism aimed at Culture Secretary Oliver Dowden's announcement comes with the fact that at no point does his five-point plan publicise any kind of timescale or projected completion dates whatsoever, anywhere. So nowhere does it mention um, we expect to achieve step three by such and such a date or even we don't expect to achieve the final step, step five, until whenever. Um, and so this is labelled the plan as meaningless and woeful by theatre unions all over the place, including Equity, Salt, Society of London Theatre, Theatres Trust. What's more, there's no mention of any kind of any kind of further investments or financial support from the government for the industry. Um, we've even published the response from John Morgan, the director of the Theatres Trust, in this week's newsletter too. So if you're clicking through to this video from the newsletter, you can have a quick read of that. Um, and in his response, John repeats the points that we've already made about the lack of time scale or dates and lack of complete lack of financial support coming and he even ends with without this critical support, we face a cultural catastrophe. While this roadmap appears to be aimed pretty much, pretty squarely at the professional sector of the performing arts industry, which is understandably in turmoil at the moment, complete turmoil, um, I know that we've got our problems in amateur theatre, but imagine if your careers were dependent on, on what's going on or what's not going on at the moment. Um, I'm, I think that thousands of amateur and non-professional societies, companies, charities, will have already prepared to deal with all five of these government's points, which are not exactly rocket science, are they? Let's go through them very quickly. Number one, rehearsal and training. That's already in place, step one. So no audience will initially be allowed to um, watch what's going on. No live um, performances can go on. Companies must also adhere to the latest social distancing guidelines. In reality, this means that theatres won't be playing to audiences even if they wanted to. It simply won't pay, but we've gone on about that an awful lot lately, haven't we? So we've got to stop bashing on about this fact that theatres cannot open and will not open if social distancing is in place. Step number two, performances for broadcasting and recording are allowed as long as companies still follow the latest social distancing guidelines. That's on both sides of the camera, obviously. Point number three, which has not been implemented yet, and we don't know when it will be, outdoor performances with some sort of audience watching. Well, step three will signal the first live performances there will also be several pilot schemes for indoor performances um, going ahead with a limited distance audience um, which both amateur and professional companies have already made it clear there's little point in pursuing so um, how relevant is that point anyway point number four performances allowed indoors and outdoors indoor audiences must remain limited socially distance you can see our previous point for that. We cannot keep repeating ourselves again and again and again. Um, and the last final point is performances allowed both indoors and outdoors. Fuller indoor audiences are now allowed, which 
appears to signal the complete easing of social distancing guidelines. Hooray! So on one hand, it yeah, it's about time that the government has eventually mentioned the word theatre in their press conferences. Thank goodness for that. But on the other hand, this magnificent new five-point plan is hardly rocket science, is it? Any one of us in the theatre sector could have probably drawn up a similar roadmap in two minutes flat. You only have to live it and breathe it to understand how it will or won't work. I mean, last week we asked you three more questions based on getting our doors opened again. Our curtains raised, audiences in front of what we love doing, putting on a theatre production. And here are the results. And almost, it's worth pointing out that almost 200 people have responded this time, which is um, more people than last time, the week before, which is very heartening. Now, number one question, is the recent government announcement that theatres may reopen from the 4th of July albeit restricting live performances, a positive move for amateur, non-professional theatre groups. While 25% answered yes, a huge 75% answered either no or not sure. Number two question. What do you see as being the main obstacle with restarting productions? While 25% blamed the financial aspects and restrictions of social distancing, again, 75% thought that the safety and confidence of respective audiences, cast and crews was of paramount importance, which at the end of the day is quite right, and thank goodness for that. Question number three. When will things return to how they were before? The big, big question. And here, a massive 85% of people responding think that we'll return to normal sometime next year, either in the first half of next year or later next year. Interestingly, 9% of people think that things probably will never return to how they once were before. I hope that's not the case. Now, before we unleash this week's questions on you, we've decided that we should probably, perhaps, offer something back. So, for answering this week's questions, we have a set of, and here they are, 63 of the all-time classic musicals. And that is going out to one lucky participant. Now, number 53, for some reason, it was Annie, and that is missing. I cannot, for the life of me, understand why it's not there. But hopefully the sun will still come out tomorrow. I couldn't resist that. I'm so sorry. We shall announce the randomly selected winner in next week's newsletter before posting them their prize of CDs, which is here. So good luck, everyone. The link for the um, questionnaire... Um, is below this video and also on our newsletter. So it doesn't matter which way round you want to do it. Um, just press the link, answer five very simple questions. It won't take you very long, probably less than a minute, I would say, to do the whole lot. And there we are. We'll see you next week. If you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified every time we produce a new video. Leave any comments below this or on our Facebook and Twitter pages. We'd love to hear from you. Stay safe, stay well. We will be back. See you next week. Goodbye.